Howdy y'all in good time zone. Welcome to the first episode of Humans of Twitch, a podcast showcasing the diverse backgrounds of individuals who have found enjoyment and community through online gaming. I'm so excited to start this journey with a dear friend of mine who I've known for over three and a half years before I started streaming, before she started streaming, before either of us were really that big into the platform. I think we just kind of stumbled into the same communities about the same time and kind of a friendship took off. We love supporting each other's new projects and everything. So yeah, I'm excited for you to get to know this amazing human and yeah, get a little bit more of some knowledge of one of my favorite content creators and inspirations, as well as a dear friend. Enjoy. All right, I am so excited that my very first guest is someone I have known for over three and a half years. Um, is considered one of my dearest friends and fellow content creator buds and is only fitting that she is my first guest because we love to support each other's projects in all the ways we can. Give it up for Mimi Lena TTV, aka hey. Mimi, formerly known as GB underscore Mimi. Hi Mimi, thanks for joining me today. Hello. <laughs> <clears throat> How are you doing I'm today? I'm enjoying myself. I'm doing pretty good. I had a good coffee this morning. Let's getting go. ready for the day and everything. Yeah. How do you like your coffee? This is only one of the questions I prep for you, but you know, might as well get going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I you I am such a routine person. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just like to do the same thing every morning. But I always I have an espresso machine. So Ooh. I make um a latte with two shots of espresso. <clears throat> with hazelnut cream and if i'm feeling adventurous i end up putting some uh some whipped cream and like um the the chocolate drizzle and stuff like that and that's what i have every morning oh that's so bomb sounding oh my gosh you'll have mm. to make that for me one day whenever we do actually meet <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely yeah okay well um coffee aside um do you want to give us a little introduction about yourself you know whatever you want to share definitely okay so um Username, obviously, Mimelina TTV. Did used to go by GV underscore Mimi. It's still there, kind of. Um, pronouns are she, her. Uh, I'm actually, I think I'm 28. <laughs> Once you start getting older, you start, like, forgetting. Forgetting, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm 28. I think I'm 28, yes. Um, currently, I am uh, self-employed with streaming and et cetera. I am currently looking for a part-time job alongside with it. But that is what's going on with the situation. Uh, living in the U.S. in Colorado, having a fun time here. Um, and I think uh, I think like I feel like I'm more of a streamer nowadays. But I yeah. definitely do chat a lot, and <laughs> I I I am way too many Twitch streams all the time. Honestly, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> no same. Yeah, but <laughs> I gave you a list of things like potential things like username, pronouns, <laughs> age, occupation, country, streamer, chatter, boop boop boop. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll get also to know more <laughs> about you, but Perfect. yeah, cool. I figured a little introduction is always helpful, but yeah. Definitely. So speaking of the whole Mimi Lena TTV versus the GB underscore Mimi, give me the username origin story, part one and part two. So like that, cause I know your real yeah. name is Selena, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. My real name is Selena. Sorry. Sorry. Um, <laughs> No, I know you're good. I, I, I get, I get both Mimi, all the time. Which is the funny thing. So, like, yeah, I know what yeah. your real name is, but, but yeah, who's Mimi? <laughs> so, actually, the Mimi part of my name, like both names, I guess you could say, those usernames, um, they're it's a childhood nickname for my parents and my mother. Um, so, when I was a kid, probably like I was probably like five or four or something like that. I used to do the thing where. I would fall asleep everywhere around the house, like <laughs> I, at my mother's feet when she was washing dishes or behind the couch. They were always finding me on the ground somewhere asleep with a blanket. That is so um, cute. And, oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, it's really cute. And so the origin of the name comes from that because in Spanish, usually the whole thing, like the cutesy way to say that you're like uh, someone who's really sleepy or like falling asleep and everything is like vas a, vas a, a mimiar or... Mimis and stuff like that. It's like a cutesy way to say it in Spanish. Mm -hmm. 
also had a huge obsession with Minnie Mouse as a kid. And so my parents really took to that. <laughs> um, and so ever since then, they just started calling me Mimi. That was like their nickname for me. And it kind of stuck on and it kind of made its way into my usernames because why not? <laughs> yeah. I understand that, too, because that's how Nat Nat kind of also uh, came about. Yeah. Too. It was like, yeah, my parents, most of my like going going through school, everyone called me Natalie, but my family... Uh calls me nat um i see so close friends who were just be like all right nat and um yeah a bit of mine my original username was nat nat 1016 which you remember that um mm -hmm. but i do um, remember that <laughs> yeah and so that stemmed from <laughs> club penguin days where um my like best fr my childhood best friend peyton um she created her username pay 19 and then i became nat nat 1016. Ah. So, yeah. So Nat Nat just kind of stuck around and I didn't really want to, I don't know. I just liked being called Nat and it felt like enough of a nickname for me or like a different identity <laughs> because <laughs> most perfect. people IRL call me my full name. Um, yeah. But so what was the origins of the GV for the Good Vibes team? So obviously the first username was GV underscore Mimi standing for Good Vibes. Um, the community that I've made with a couple of my friends has become known as the Good Vibes community. So honestly, the origin for that was that my friend Suda and Anna, for the longest time, I think like probably the year or two before 2020 when I actually got on Twitch for the first time, um, they were always talking about, oh my gosh, let's like stream on Twitch on Stardew Valley and call it Good Vibes with Suda and Anna or Anna and Suda. And we'll have Mimi as like a guest star every so often. I didn't know anything <laughs> about Twitch back then. And I was just like, OK, that sounds cool. Yeah, you do it. Do it and everything. And then I guess there came one day that Suda actually started streaming, which was like literally when COVID hit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um and he started streaming and I was like, OK, I guess I'm making a Twitch account now. <laughs> yeah, we call ourselves the good vibes. OK, so I'm going to make my username GV underscore Mimi and then Anna's going to be GV underscore Anna. Mm -hmm. And so it just kind of it's the rest is history now. Um, eventually, I did change my name to Mimi Lina, but that was only because like I, I felt like I needed to. Um, what's the word for it? Uh, like like not that GV underscore Mimi is not a good name. But I felt like I needed to find like a better branded name mm -hmm. to really fit with everything. And I yeah. felt like that was the name that kind of came to be and everything. Yeah, with how you grew and everything. It's like wild to I know whenever I created my user, like my account for Twitch, um, mm -hmm. I, I just kind of made it the Nat Nat 1016, not thinking anything. I was just like, oh, well, this was my username as like, you know, for my other gaming yeah, accounts same. that I've done. And I same. didn't think I didn't about really... where it would go type of thing. Um, yeah, same. I didn't really think about it. I just like, okay, I'm just going to name it GV underscore maybe. They didn't have any intentions to stream yet. That happened like probably a year after yeah. and everything. But yeah, I just kind of like made the name and everything. <clears throat> so cool. So going back to your childhood, what was your first video game console you can remember having? And do any games or memories stick out to you? So um, I didn't start off with a console. So I actually had a handheld for a long time. I didn't really own too many games growing up or like any consoles, just like uh, the money wasn't there. That's OK. Yeah. Um, but um, my one of my childhood friends back then, who I would hang out a lot in like a youth club and everything, she decided to give me a Game Boy Color and I had my very first handheld and she gave me Pokemon Red and <gasps> Pokemon Crystal along with it. Wow. And so I, I didn't have any games before that, but they were always talking about Pokemon around me. And, did, and she was like, OK, I need to give you this. You or something like that. I was really young. And and ever since mm -hmm. then, I just played Pokemon games like on that little Game Boy Color. Eventually got myself like a Nintendo DS. Always had no DS. Always had handhelds and only played Pokemon. Um, I did eventually get a Nintendo 64. And oh, wow. we got Mario Super Mario Party. We got the first one. And so I was really into Pokemon and Mario Party, playing Mario Party with my sister back then. Mm -hmm. And that was that was everything. Uh, if any memories really stick out, honestly, probably some of the times that I played 
Mario Party with my sister while we were trying to like literally a hundred percent the game and mm-hmm. everything and all the maps, or even like like you know the thing where you have like a I don't know if you've ever owned a Game Boy Color. Have you I ever have, owned a yeah. Game Boy Color? That was my first one. I had to. Yeah. So so Game Boy Colors don't really have light. Oh, the pain. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, always and so to find I re- <laughs> yes, exactly. So I always, I, I, I always remember the times in the car playing Pokemon, <laughs> waiting for the lamp light to shine through so that I could see yes. what was going on in the game. <laughs> Literally, nostalgia yeah. right there. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. Whenever I turn it on in a second, yeah, you take it for granted now with the Switch, just like mm-hmm. where you could just play in the dark or play anywhere. But yeah. I remember like getting the accessory to like that gives a little light to it and I felt so yeah. fancy because I was just like oh my gosh I got a gaming accessory because <laughs> yeah my hair, like we also didn't like spend a lot on games or anything um but that That's is perfect. so interesting I didn't realize it was Pokemon that was your um yeah yeah, yeah it was I was a big Pokemon girl Amazing. I was a big Pokemon girl. I love that Pokemon kind of- anime, but I never, I only watched the Kanto League, but I never had a game. Like, no, I, I had no idea, like, how to get into the games. I knew that they existed, but my parents didn't mm-hmm. really look into it. Um, yeah, so it was only in college that I finally get uh, Pokemon Blue to play. Um, oh, nice. And it, yeah, <laughs> I think... Uh, the person who gifted it to me kind of regretted it because I just got hooked right away and was just like pouring. <laughs> I was just on it twenty four seven. Um, yeah. But how do you how do have those early games of like playing on the Game Boy Color impacted the games that you've kind of gravitated towards in the years since? Hmm. Honestly, I don't play a lot of Pokemon now. Yeah, which is a shame. I was like, I yeah. don't associate with Pokemon. Have you ever even streamed one before? I have not streamed the Pokemon game. Because I know that I won't be able to finish it. Yeah. Uh, I think it's like over the years, I just haven't been able to finish games more often. Mm, yeah. uh, it's, it's a thing with getting older or even just like ND stuff and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but like uh, Pokemon specifically, because they're so long and I always feel the need to like literally train every single thing I catch. <laughs> yeah. Um, it ends up taking too long. And so I end up getting distracted and I end up dropping the game. It used to be better when I was a kid because it was the only thing I had and that I would do mm-hmm. for fun on leisure time. Yeah. Um, and so that was the only thing I was doing. So I was finishing games and playing like hundreds and hundreds of hours on these things. But like nowadays I just don't um if anything, like the games that have like slowly become something else is probably like more RPG games. Mm, um yeah. I think during high school I obtained one of the games from Kingdom Hearts that was available uh. on the Nintendo. Uh actually loaned to me by Anna. <laughs> oh, I don't yeah. even know if I gave that back to her. Um <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And so ever since then I started getting into a lot of Kingdom Hearts. Um I only had like the DS games that were available and everything, but like I got really into RPG games and watching the playthroughs on YouTube and everything. And eventually I got it. I got actual games like for the cage, like stuff and everything for the PlayStation later in college and everything. But like, it's kind of like got gravitated towards that. And now I do a lot of soda and yeah. I don't know. <sighs> <laughs> oh, that's so amazing. Uh, speaking of like high school experiences. So we are both Texans actually, and about the mm-hmm. same age. I'm 29, you're 28. Um, but let's chat about what simil- similarities and differences we had growing up there. Um, we don't have to get into too doxing of like location yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, but, you did. But like, say, I'm, a, I mean, I'm a white American, you're Mexican American. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of just curious. What was it like growing up um, in your, um, like, just in your high school and such? Mm, I grew up in a border town. I yeah. won't say where and everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it was a predominantly a Hispanic town. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people that were crossing over the border and everything. Um, growing up, honestly, was really more of like just like a Mexican, American, Hispanic kind of experience and everything. Both my parents did not know English mm. or not as much English whenever they came over. Um because they, they immigrated, uh, they came over from Mexico and everything yeah. and started their lives here and everything. Then had us and everything and my three sisters. Um, and so growing up, 
there was only Spanish in the house because they didn't do too they didn't do too much English only mm -hmm. whenever we needed to and everything. And then at school I was learning English. So I was learning Spanish and English at the same time. And so a lot of my experiences back then was really like if TV was in Spanish. I had like five channels, everything like Pokemon was in Spanish. I used to watch Pokemon wow. too <laughs> um, and everything. Uh, most of my friends all probably knew Spanish for the most part. There mm -hmm. wasn't many people in my town that were white or yeah. of any other ethnicity or background, Mexican background or anything like that. Most of my friends usually knew Spanish for the most part and everything. Um, but I, I feel like, I, I don't feel like I had a Texan experience yeah. <laughs> growing up. I wasn't like yeehaw, Texas, <laughs> cowboy, cowboy boots and everything. Yeah. I actually hate cowboy boots. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I don't have any myself. I've never owned a pair. So you're, you're good too. <laughs> yeah. It's so, that was not really my experience. It was, I, I, I don't know. I feel like it was a very, um, I, I it, for lack of better word, it's just really a Hispanic experience yeah. and everything, and like having get-togethers with family, having so many, so much family actually, uh, tío, tía, and, and etc. and everything. It, it was just always like that. Um, yeah. And I, I think that's about that I can think of that yeah. might be different. I don't know how your upbringing may have been different though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... I, yeah, I'm also going to somewhat avoid saying my city name, but I grew up in Central Texas, by comparison. Mm -hmm. um, definitely a healthy mixture, I would say, for the city. I'm trying to recall if it's, like, what percentage might be white to black to Hispanic. Uh, I think it's, like, yeah. it could be, like, maybe 40 or 50% white and then 25% each or with, like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's that sort of thing. So, but I... Just, I grew up on a farm, actually, outside of a city, so, um, not, I guess I was a little actual yeehaw, but <laughs> not, <laughs> not in personality, really, but I happened to be able to go to, like, the big public school that was the White Plight School, um, where the suburbs were, and that's where the city was growing, and so there's, mm. a, it was a, like, a, actually a fairly wealthy school, um, but very strong religious, um, um, ah what is it um not inspiration just like push I, it was a presence there we go it was a strong religious presence. yeah yeah there we go um and so whenever i describe my high school experience to people they're like that sounds like the most private like religious school you could think of just because everyone <laughs> on their letterman jackets had a bible verse um people often would just be carrying around their bibles uh the cliques would be formed based off of what church you went to it was just a normal thing to ask, like a normal getting to know someone question was just like, oh, which church do you like, does your family go to or you go to? Because sometimes, yeah. Um, but it was a very, very conservative, very traditional um, place where, um, yeah, I wasn't the most open minded um, place and I was very ready to get out <laughs> when I could. Um, <laughs> yeah, which like. That's where, circling back to you, I was curious, like, how much, was it a huge culture shock in many ways to, like, say, go to college? Um, mm, I don't, so fortunately, you don't have to name it, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I get you. Uh, so, fortunately, where I went to college, it was still a predominantly, like, a good amount of, like, a Hispanic population okay. there. Awesome. There was actually a big Indian population there, too, uh, without saying where it is and everything. Yeah. <clears throat> But like uh, most of my friends, there's still Mimi was an international from... student in India. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh my gosh! Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, no, no. Most of my friends in college and uh, like predominantly the college population was like a lot of Hispanics as well and everything. Mm, okay. Um. Most of the people that went to my college were actually from like more of a southern part of Texas and everything, even okay. more southern than like my border town or whatever I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know um but yeah um i going back to like my high school experience because i forgot to mention this one thing and everything um but i feel like it was definitely an, an open-minded kind of experience because it was just a, a i guess i don't know hispanic background a lot of different people there um it was a pretty fairly big public school uh i i don't know if you remember like the ratings for like the size yeah, of schools yeah like, mine was, was like a 5a 
5A, 5A, 6A. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we, I had a big high school class and everything of like 500 people that graduated or whatever. Yeah. Um, So yours was 5A? Yeah, yeah. Whenever yeah. I was going there, it was 5A. I think it's probably at a 6A right now. Same with mine. Um, yeah, it was 5A whenever I was there and then is now a 6A with added, added category since graduating. Because, yeah, it happened like a yeah, year or two and, after and, we graduated. and more kids. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just keep growing and growing. <laughs> That's cool exactly. that we went to similar size high schools. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so... Also, I guess related to like your college sort of experience, like whenever I met you three and a half years ago, you were a high school music teacher. Um, what was what has your relationship been like with music that led you to that occupation? So I so I was actually the assistant band director slash elementary music teacher. Hey. <laughs> so I taught pre-K oh. through 12 every single wow. day. <laughs> That Every single day. <laughs> yes, it was an exhausting time, actually. Kids are exhausting. <laughs> um, but yeah, I taught elementary music. That was like probably like the main part of my job. Mm-hmm. And the other part was also like uh, being the assistant director, assisting the uh, the head director for middle school band and also like high school band. Um, this was a small school. It was a relatively extremely small school. Yeah. So obviously having two directors and one of them having split jobs like that's that's just how things work because yeah. you know budget and smaller school and everything. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. <laughs> it was an experience. I was having classes of little first graders of 30. Oh. 30 first graders in Oof. one room. That can you imagine and it's that? Just you. <laughs> yep. They were bouncing them. off the walls. Okay. Hey, that prepared you well for streaming with 30 people in chat who are also basically like first grade. Just kidding, y'all are great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, um uh because in high school I started like in band and everything, and music was always a thing that like was like really natural to me. It's, I've I've always been about music since like um probably like seventh grade in middle school and everything. I started mm-hmm. with clarinet and then learned violin the next year. I, I could pick up instruments like very easily. Uh, so skilled. Like so quickly. Skilled. Yeah, the skill. <laughs> <laughs> I quickly rose up like in ranks because usually like in most bands, you have like chair seatments yeah. and, and everything. And you have like first chair, second chair and everything. So even when I got to high school, I really, I, I guess I knew what I was doing and they put me higher up there. I don't know what my director was thinking um (laughs) but i just really enjoyed music since then i just like feel like music was the thing that just like made sense in Mm -hmm. my head despite all of the other nonsense in my head but that was (laughs) the one thing that did make sense Mm -hmm. um and it felt like it was something i was actually good at and so um obviously i felt like okay well i need to do this one thing it feels like it's something that's special to me i can actually like feel like emotions and stuff like that and so kind of went into it. I actually went into music wanting to go the performance route. Oh, gotcha. Um, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to like eventually, my dream was to be eventually um, the, what's it called? Um, be in an, uh, an orchestra and mm-hmm. play for weekly gigs every week yeah. uh, in an orchestra. And that would have been great. But the carts weren't there. That's okay. Yeah. Eventually, I, I ended up going to music education and mm-hmm. eventually became like a band teacher. And it was it was it was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, obviously had its hardships, but the kids were amazing. The kids were amazing. <clears throat> would you ever return to teaching? I'm going to be honest with you. I probably would not return to teaching yeah. in this day and age. I mean, um, yeah, it's really hard in the United States. I mean, y'all aren't like teachers are not funded the way that they need to be. They don't have the yeah. resources that they deserve that like and the support. Um, exactly. Yeah. It, uh, honestly, like teaching was great in the sense of like teaching the kids, you know, music uh-huh. and the experience of teaching these little ones, the importance of music and just these life lessons to it was everything. It was great. But really what held back and holds back a lot of teachers to stay in age and everything is the system. It's just yeah. really a system for over the years that is working against teachers and students alone. Mm-hmm. And obviously there needs to be something to be changed in the education system in yeah. the United States before something can go better for teachers and students alike and everything. 
And so I don't think I would go back right now unless something big changed, but that's going to take a while. Um, I just don't have the patience and the energy to be able to do that again. <clears throat> Very understandable. Let's go education reform. Come on. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> well, something that I really admire about you, um, and Anna's come up a few times, but yeah, something that mm -hmm. I really have admired um, having witnessed in this time that I've known you is how you've supported your girlfriend, Anna, through her transition and are still together after many years, um, I, I I believe high school sweethearts as well. So um, mm -hmm. when you think about her transitions, what sort of thoughts come to your mind? Well, Anna is Anna. Anna is my person. Yeah. And that will never change. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what happens and everything. Yeah. Um, obviously, whenever first things started happening and everything, it was a little bit of a tough time because, you know, change yeah. is scary. Change is, is scary yeah. for anybody. Um, but it like, obviously, it's just like it just became a thing of like, no, Anna's still the same person. She's mm -hmm. obvious. I, actually, honestly, I would argue that she's more herself now yeah. than she ever was before. Honestly, mm -hmm. um, more that kind of self-reflection. Yeah, just, exactly. Because she's happier yeah. and more her, you know, herself. Yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah. Um, honestly, like like for a good while before like that happened and everything i always had like a some somewhat of like a little bit of a hunch like i i, I know her very well i've yeah. been with her for a very long time and i always knew that like okay something's up yeah i don't think she knows it herself mm -hmm. something's up <laughs> and when it happened it was like oh okay there yeah. we go <laughs> there it is <laughs> yeah and everything and yeah and like i think she she is definitely happier now and i think that's like the part part of it that's like most important is that whenever people go through this kind of like self re reflection for their identity and they figure out more things about themselves is that like in the end the person is still the person mm -hmm. and if they're happier that's what counts in the end yeah it's literally what counts in the end <clears throat> yeah no i just I, i've loved that um <laughs> just seeing everything you know through that um just like you know as a bystander in this and just mm -hmm. yeah no honest great you're great um, <laughs> you're great uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> um so i guess a little speaking of like things that are just inherently a part of you um we also have this in common where um in recent years i think we've both come to terms with like our own neurodivergency when it comes to undiagnosed adhd um mm -hmm. looking back what sort of coping mechanisms do you think you adopted to survive school and do you think that potentially playing games has helped with that? So obviously I didn't know yeah. that this was going on with my head back then and everything. Um, I think I was a workaholic. I don't know if that's like a coping mm. mechanism, but I was definitely such a workaholic throughout high school and middle school. Me too. I, I always felt like I had to work so much harder than everybody else just to just be just to be close to them in terms of like um yeah. like education wise and yeah, everything and classes and everything. <laughs> just yeah trying, yes, so. just staying afloat yeah. yeah i would spend hours upon hours every single day working on homework making sure that i was on top of things and everything um my friends back then still friends now and everything uh we were all like we were like top of our classes like i was yeah. top of my class and everything um Casual. anna yeah anna was really good at stuff and so she was always a natural with school and everything mm -hmm. um but i always felt like even though they were at the top and it was so easy for them to stay at the top i had to do so much work on top yeah. of that just to stay close to there to them mm -hmm. to what they were doing and everything so it always felt like a little bit of like an inner competition kind of thing it's like i yeah. i need to be able to do this because they're able to do it as well so like i should be able to do it mm -hmm. i think it was also like a fact that like <clears throat> upbringing um i came from a predominantly hispanic family and everything um my father wasn't really around that much and everything yeah. as a kid even now um and so it was always like uh we took care of each other and everything so i kind of had to grow up a little earlier than usual mm. so that kind of helped with the whole like managing myself in high school because i knew yeah. that i needed to do it so that my mother wouldn't worry about things about school 
and so that I could get like a scholarship in college because we weren't yeah. going to be able to pay for college, obviously. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah, that's basically what it was. I don't know if playing games really helped. I'm <laughs> going to be honest with you. I think high school, I didn't play. I think I managed my game playing, actually. Because yeah. I knew that I needed to be on top of, like, uh, school. Yeah. And I needed to be on top of, like, music. Because I was also competing in, mm -hmm. like, solo competitions for band and everything. So I had to make sure that I was practicing every day for that, too. Um, so it was, I think just like, I was forced to manage my time better because of everything going on. Yeah. <clears throat> I actually, yeah, I actually didn't play video games either in high school, really. Like I played in, a little bit in elementary, then in middle school, and then I kind of dropped it just for sake of time. Though I always would, the second bet I had a break or like, mm -hmm. um, like in, in, in summer or just like having a day off in the winter break, that's whenever I would like happily turn on my Wii or my GameCube to be yeah. to return back to that. But even then I would still it was like, okay, no, exactly. I have to do I have to do my work first. Um but I'm so sorry that you had to grow up early. <laughs> it is it, yeah. It happens. It shouldn't happen, but yeah. it happens. And and you work with it. You work with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um so you also have Vitaligo. And mm -hmm. how has your relationship with your vitiligo changed over time? So vitiligo, let vitiligo. me like Dang just it. like yeah, no, you're good, you're good. Not a lot of people know how to like pronounce. I know it. what it's okay. it is. It's and okay. I can recognize the word, but then I'm always like, wait, where does the emphasis on the eyes? <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries, no worries. Um, so vitiligo, let me like go into details of what it is. So vitiligo yeah, yeah. is an autoimmune, uh, uh autoimmune condition disease, et cetera, disorder, um, that affects your skin. Um, and so what it is basically is that your immune system goes haywire because of some like big event, at least this is what the doctors told me. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and so your immune system gets, goes haywire and attacks its own like cells and everything. In this case, it was my melanin cells, which are in charge of bringing pigment or the skin color to your skin to color to your skin um and so i think it i was like nine i think mm -hmm. whenever it happened it just kind of suddenly happened i had like gone through like uh the first death in the family my grandmother had oh. passed away back then it was yeah. like just the first thing that had happened and everything um never experienced that <clears throat> and so it like i think the coming summer there was like a little white spot that showed up on my ankle and me and my mother were like, well, what is that? That's yeah. weird. Okay, let's go to the doctor then. <laughs> and so over the next year, like my body kind of like blew up like Christmas tree with lights. And wow. there was a, a bunch of white spots after that. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> um, I didn't like my skin growing up, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it was, a, it was a tough time. It was a tough time mm -hmm. growing up. Um, Grew up with a lot of self-esteem issues, self-confidence yeah. issues and everything that I've gotten better over time. It just took a lot, a lot of time and patience and everything mm -hmm. and the right support group and everything. Um, but it, yeah, like as a kid, I was bullied a lot. Just, yeah. you know, kids don't understand things. They're ignorant mm -hmm. and they, Especially when they with see things something, that are they different don't. From exactly, with things know. that are different. So. They don't understand what they're seeing and everything. So uh, I was called every name you could probably come up with <laughs> and everything. It happens. So yeah. it happens. So it's a, it's, a, it's a thing from the past and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but I do like talking about this from time yeah. to time because it just it kind of gives me a voice for people who also have experienced vitiligo themselves. Yeah, because I uh, I'm just one person. But possibly my experience might be able to like touch someone or uh, someone yeah. other that might be listening and might help them be uh, a little bit better with themselves. I guess you could say that. Um, yeah. Didn't you recently have a <clears throat> comment on one of your YouTube videos saying that like it was cool to see? Someone, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yes. I remember that. That always like really warms up my heart because then it just like feels like I'm doing something right. Mm -hmm. And it just, it feels nice. It feels nice here. It feels nice here in my heart here. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I think growing up, I, I definitely didn't like my skin too much. But mm -hmm. like, I think with like friends and family, it just eventually started getting a little bit better every time. Um, <clears throat> um, Anna was actually a big help. 
because I oh. we started technically dating in middle school and then we dated oh again gosh. in high school I guess um little TLDR there um yeah. <laughs> but um yeah so she was a big thing in like helping me realize that like um that I was truly beautiful for my skin and not yeah. because someone was telling me if that makes any any mm-hmm. sense let me like get into that um yeah I, I always think about it as in like as least if you have at least one person that believes in you and tells you hey you're beautiful um no matter what then eventually you'll start believing it yeah, not just because <laughs> yeah yeah so it's catching on you'll start believing it not just because the person is telling you because you but because you eventually will realize it that it's actually no, you're actually beautiful. Everybody's mm-hmm. beautiful in their own way yeah. and everything. And that's kind of how, like, I've gotten better over the years now. And I've been, like, confident enough to, like, just, like, act- actually have my face around. I know a lot of things with people who have vitiligo is, like, obviously the self de- self-esteem and, like, self-confidence. And so not being able to show their face yeah. or their skin around people. And so I'm just glad that I had the right support group to get me to that point and everything. <clears throat> Yeah, because you've always dreamed of Cam, too, so... Yeah! Which is, like, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Just amazing. Um, Going, like, speaking of, like, your... of Cam, and then going into, like, your streaming career, um... It was pretty wild that last year... <laughs> you had a pretty good 2023, I will say, for going I, viral I, a few I... times there. Um yeah. <laughs> Yeah. How wild was it for you that your beating Breath of the Wild with the Ocarina Challenge got featured by a number of gaming sites, including IGN? Um, it was really wild. It was honestly very overwhelming. Yeah. Suddenly my face and name was everywhere. Mm-hmm. People were messaging me, telling me, hey, I saw you on this thing. And I'm like, what do you mean you saw me on this thing? I haven't even seen, <laughs> seen me, me on, on that thing. thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was kind of overwhelming, but in a good way. Mm-hmm. Like it, it felt like, oh my gosh, it's happening. This is really freaking cool. What the heck? Um, whenever I came up with Breath of the Wild with an ocarina, um, I, I I was expecting a little bit of virality in a way Mm -hmm. but not to this extent i was just thinking okay maybe i'll get like a video that gets a couple thousand views okay that's good i'm good with that that's fine but i was not expecting to see my name on every gaming article in so many different languages i have lost count of how many articles are out there with my name on their (laughs) net there's some like in like other languages like japanese or like spanish or like german and everything um it's crazy um and sometimes they don't tag you in them. So like That's so wild like, that they don't. <laughs> oh. Yeah. But it's just it's just crazy. It yeah. Oh my gosh. Um it just like it kinda like really solidified with that I just like the content creation was like the thing. And it just felt good. It felt good mm-hmm. to be, be there. It's just like it was crazy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I was so I was just like Oh, that's my friend. <laughs> Whenever <laughs> all that was happening. But yeah, you've always been on the forefront of being like super creative and like thinking of new ways to add to your streams or like different ways to do different challenge runs and just like figuring out you like have an idea and you're like, okay, no, let me do let me go through the TikToks, let me go through the Reddits. Like I will tinker away to see how I can get this thing to work potentially. And it's just something so that I'm like so and ad- like admirable. Wait. Oh. I admire a lot about you. Oh. <laughs> and like, obviously, I turn to you a lot whenever I like see something that you're doing. I'm like, oh, I kind of want to add that too. Like, I bet Mimi can help me yeah. through it and hold my hand. Definitely. <laughs> um, so what other highlights come up for you in terms of like through the, the three years you've been streaming? Um, I'm trying to think here. I feel like this last year was like the big year and everything. And things are only going to look up after that. Um. But I mean, I mean, recently I also beat only up with a recorder and then yeah. I also beat like recently, literally a couple of days ago, we beat Tears of the Kingdom with an ocarina and that was crazy. Um, I'm trying to think of other things. Um, if anything, there was one big highlight that I remember that really was dear to my heart was I think at the end of my first was at the end of the, my first year was it or maybe end of my second year. I don't remember which one. I don't remember exactly when it was, but I did my first charity stream. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. And it was the, 
it was after, unfortunately, the passing of a very loving cat, yeah. Niso and everything. May he rest in peace and everything. Yeah. Still um, the mascot but, of your stream, though. Still the mascot. Yeah, yeah, he was. Um, but um, I had a chari- charity stream dedicated to him and for cats and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, all of the funds went towards uh, Every Cat Health Con- Foundation, mm-hmm. which was like to help with like research in cat diseases and everything. Because uh, he unfortunately passed away from... Um, I, I, don't, I think they said it was like either... It could have been an aggressive cancer... I don't know. He he deteriorated within a month, and it was very quick. Yeah. And they couldn't they couldn't find out what it was. And he was very um, young too. So it was he completely was very unexpected. young. He had barely turned two years old. Yeah. So it I was remember unfortunate. how hard it was for you, and just like how just like devastating and shocking it was for. Yeah, everyone. yeah, it was. Uh, I've gotten better about it, but like obviously that charity stream meant a lot to me because yeah. my whole community was able to come together for something. Um, for someone who was my family and everything and to be able to do something really good with charity just kind of became a thing from then on it's like i i've been wanting to do more charity streams mm-hmm. since then so that we can like it's just the idea of being able to bring your community together for something so important like that is beautiful is honestly beautiful it really doesn't is, matter yeah. how much ends up being like every dollar counts but like being able to like get people together to do something like important like cancer research or health uh mental health care or even stuff for like trans health care and everything yeah. it's just it's crazy it's so good yeah. so i think uh, i think that's probably about it i don't know what other highlights can i can think of right yeah. now yeah no <clears throat> i love that we have both done charity streams, but I also love that, like, you have also recently joined a team that is dedicated to charity sort of um, yes. outreach and, like, just doing more of that. I feel like uh, people who don't know much about Twitch or just, you know, just the, hear online gaming, they don't, like, the charity stream aspect is not something that probably comes to mind, is, like, the fact that a lot of us do raise money for <laughs> a lot of organizations or the fact that, like, games done quick, like, only mm-hmm. raises money for... Cha- like like charities and such like i feel like a lot of people just assume oh you're just in it for the money type of thing or like well which is also like oh well, <laughs> it's a very like tough grind to, that you have to go through but like no a lot of us also love giving back um mm-hmm. and just coming together to like raise funds and raise awareness of different things um which is something that i just love about at least our little corner of the internet of like what we're interested <laughs> in doing and giving back um but yeah, and speaking of kind of like the outside sort of looking in, uh, what do you tell your family and IRL friends about Twitch and like the fact that you stream? Well, my IRL friends do know that I stream. Mm-hmm. Actually, a couple of them do show to the chat Ooh. frequently. Actually. I wonder who they <laughs> frequently. could be. That's not sarcastic. Yes. I literally, I'm just <laughs> curious now, like, oh, what usernames like could be the IRL <laughs> friends that I just had never yes. known. <laughs> I've got several IRL friends from like my hometown and from my college town who eventually found out that I streamed and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've joined over the years. Uh, some of them have like actually been like active community members now. Yeah. Um, and some of them are just watching on the side here and there. But it's it, they. I feel like more of them probably understand a little bit more about the Twitch things because they're more like my age and they understand gaming and et cetera and everything. Uh, some of them also are frequent Twitch like community members of other places as well. Gotcha, so yeah. like they know about Twitch. My family. <coughs> um, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh boy. So yeah. I think my family only really found out because of the viral thing. Really? You know, the Breath, of, <gasps> yeah, Breath of the Wild with Ocarina thing. Yeah. Um, I think after that happened, I couldn't really keep quiet. <laughs> yeah. Um, what did they and think that you were because... doing as a job? <clears throat> so they knew that I was looking for a teaching job. Um, they didn't know that teaching was going to be a thing that I wasn't going to do anymore just yet. I hadn't come to terms to saying that to them just yet. Eventually I did, though. Um. But whenever I told my mother about Twitch, it's like, hey, I'm doing this for right now while I'm looking for Mm -hmm. a job and everything. But this is what it is. It's like camera and like, you know, on the Internet. And honestly, you you know what happens when you tell like older generations (laughs) camera and Internet. Yeah, Yeah, that was an interesting conversation. Yeah, especially being women, you know, I mean, like that's just a, that's a whole other thing that we can rant about yeah exactly time, yeah yeah exactly 
yeah, she, the first things that came out of her mouth is like Selena, <laughs> Selena, porque. <laughs> and then I had to explain to her, it's like, no, no, ma, no, 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 ma, no. <laughs> ma. No, it's like games and like Video people games, watching, uh, like they talk and everything. And I'm sometimes they give money. <laughs> like, yeah. But and also, so it wouldn't be a problem then, if I was. But also, yeah, don't worry, mom. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And so, like, then she understood, like, oh, okay, okay, that's okay. Okay, mm-hmm. that's fine. You can continue doing that thing or whatever. Um, and she also follows me on TikTok. A lot of my family members now follow me on TikTok Aww. and like Twitter. And so I'm always thinking, okay, they're going to see this video of me. Hopefully yeah. they don't send me a message about it or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yeah. <clears throat> that's so interesting. Yeah. yeah. I, I think my, my mom is definitely like in good terms with it now. I think after I talked to her about like the all of the viral stuff that was going on and telling her like, hey, this could actually maybe be like a, a, thing. a good like a thing and where I could make money for myself and everything, at mm-hmm. least like some part time money or whatever. Yeah. Um, and everything is just like, what do you mean you went viral and you you had this many people watching you? That really blew her mind yeah. and everything. And so after that, she was like, OK, I guess she she probably knows a thing or two about this. Uh, it's mm-hmm. OK, then. Yeah. Aw. <laughs> we love a we love an acceptance story. <laughs> At least an eventual yes, exactly. one. Yes, exactly. Somewhat. Yeah. Yeah. But have you ever felt like shame in watching or streaming on Twitch? I mean, you just mentioned that your family didn't have much of an idea about it until you went viral. So um, just kind of curious about your thought process about like why I you hadn't told them and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. So I hadn't really told them. It was really more of a thing of like a... For a long time, teaching was the thing that yeah. was like, okay, this is the thing, mom. This is the thing. We're doing this. Um, and so, and I was always like, I really feel like I was one of the, the kids of the family that like, okay, she went to college, first one to go to college. Mm, She's setting a, an example. Mm-hmm. Like I was the prime kid for my family and everything. Um, and so... Whenever I ended up not doing teaching anymore, I kind of felt like, okay, am I the failure of the family now? I don't know. Um, Obviously, I wasn't and everything. I obviously. Um, But uh, it definitely, it it took a tiny bit for them to like, it's like, okay, it's okay if she's not teaching. Yeah. Um, And also probably took it back for your own brain to be like, it's okay. It's okay, but I'm not doing this. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, And everything. Um, But yeah. Uh, I don't I don't think I've ever felt shame um with streaming or anything like mm-hmm. that. Um or watching. I think watching I've always been fine. It's like, yeah, I'm watching Twitch and everything. Yeah. Only like if like I'm like around other friends, it's like, okay, I probably should not be rude and pull up someone's stream right now. I should probably <laughs> just be actually yeah. be partaking on socializing. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> if anything, the only thing with like related to that was oh gosh okay you're you're gonna have a ball with this so oh. the at the end of my first year of twitch it was my third year of teaching and it was gonna be my last year of teaching mm-hmm. uh, mostly because i was gonna be moving away and anna had found a new job and so like we needed to go somewhere else yeah um and so my students found my tiktok uh oh <laughs> exactly and so because they found my tiktok they found my twitch and so guess like on a i think it was like a breath of the wild any percent stream i was Mm -hmm. like learning how to do like btb the castle or something like that which is so painful and and a bunch of children showed up in my chat (laughs) saying all these things um some of them not so nice things. I'm gonna tell you what? right now. Those little those little stinkers. Um <laughs> yeah. Um and so ever since then I've always been like a little bit wary of mm-hmm. whenever students come by to my stream. Yeah. Cause like I am like a family friendly streamer. Yeah, you I really are. don't mm-hmm. Yeah, and everything. But like as long as you're like chilling and vibing and you're of the age, I don't mind you being there and mm-hmm. everything and everything. Um but like, if you start getting weird or saying some really bad things, it's like I'm gonna ban you and everything. And said, I don't have to ban a student for things. It's like, yeah. what the heck? And by um, age, you mean thirteen, right? Not eighteen. Yeah, by okay. age, I mean thirteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I I think more nowadays, I'm more like a sixteen plus kind of thing. I got you. But yeah. usually, we can tell whenever someone in there is like way yeah. younger than it's, they should be. It's pretty. It's but pretty yeah. obvious. Like, 
the kids think that they can pull a fast one on us, but it's like, all right, we're in our late twenties. We know what you, yeah, <laughs> like we got, we have an idea, like, yeah, exactly. So yeah, I think that's the only thing. Sometimes I'm worried about streaming on TikTok because sometimes they come back in there and I have to reband them because TikTok's yeah. terrible for like moderation and everything. Dang, I didn't realize right. that. It kind of makes sense. I feel like it's just so big; it doesn't know what to do, especially with the live streaming aspect, yeah. since it's. Definitely started off as more just the small videos, but then it's probably still exactly. trying to figure out how to compete in that space. Live streaming is still a process there. Yeah. Um, it's a work in progress. There we go. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. why don't we move into the portion of the podcast where we I ask the questions that I love to ask everyone at the end, or I ask everyone. I will be wanting to ask everyone <laughs> since this is episode one. Mm-hmm. Um, so the first one I want to ask is Hills to Die On. Uh, provide a brief rant about a highlight and downside of being on Twitch, Discord, or gaming culture, or, you know, online stuff in general. Like, what is a highlight and a downside? <clears throat> okay, so a highlight, I was thinking about this, um, I think is the ability to actually foster, like, online friendships with people across the world. Heck yeah. Um, yeah. And so I, I know like so many people are always like, oh, my gosh, you have online friends. They're not your actual friends. Oh, my know, gosh. Yeah. And everything. But like like to be for real, like you can actually like if you do it the right way, you can actually foster real friendships with mm-hmm. people. Like uh, many I different... consider us being real friends. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, we've never met in person. <clears throat> like we, we know a ton about each other. I mean, we learned a lot about each other just today. But I mean, we've been <laughs> buds like. I mean, if anything, I talk to you way more than a lot of my, quote unquote, like my IRL, quote unquote, real friends, you know? Oh, my gosh. So it's important. Just... Okay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, not just me. Maybe it doesn't have to be reciprocated. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but anyway, sorry. I jumped in on your hill of dying on. So go, go ahead. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. But yeah, like, it's just nice because you get to meet other people of like different backgrounds, different up- upbringings. Mm-hmm. Um cultures ethnicities etc you name it um you learn a lot about the world like that and you become even more open-minded like that through the internet or at least with twitch because you get to just actually have like meaningful connections with people online and everything now the dun- downside of this though is since it's like a double-edged sword kind of thing is per social relationships yeah, <laughs> uh, <this is> <laughs> Yeah, Example it's just it's a, such a Matt's ra- like yeah. love of Mimi. <laughs> just kidding. Oh my gosh, <laughs> um, it's just such a a line to titter on, basically. Yeah. Um, and you have to be careful about it. Like, it's like any online friendship like that, you kind of have to think about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously, if you do it the right way, then you'll stray off and you won't go into the parasocial and everything. Yeah. But like, I think like I've stayed away from parasocial for the most part I I have because too, honestly. I was also. Because I was also a streamer and everything. Mm-hmm. And so I've kind of seen the side of things where some viewers would come in and be love way bombing. too over. Yeah, exactly. Way too overly familiar. Oh my gosh. Talking about love bombing. I, ha- I had that happen once. Really? Where someone came in and immediately proclaimed their love and undying love to me immediately. I mean, I get and it. And I was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was it was it was kind of out there and i was like wait hold up dude hold up dude hold on back up back up i don't know you i literally yeah. don't know who you are your username is like cookie monster 23 <laughs> yeah <laughs> or something like that i don't know and that's all <clears throat> i know you as like i i don't know anything <clears throat> about you you don't know you, you think you may know something about me but like <clears throat> yeah. yeah yeah and i think as long as you do it the correct way and like you go to the right means and everything and don't overstep your boundaries. Eventually you can actually make online friendships, but like the parasocial things, like the stories I hear of people yeah, and stalkers and et cetera, it's, it's honestly terrifying. Yeah. It's honestly terrifying. Yeah, for <clears> real. <throat> um, on a much more, I guess like, like on a lighter note, um, the next question is, um, <laughs> hey, some, this, I'm very proud of this question. Um, and I may or may not describe what the, like, um, <laughs> define some of these words that if you are not part of Twitch, you will probably just be like, um, what? Um, I'll probably describe them in the show notes below. So, um, what is something video game related or otherwise that has you currently pog champing, has you pause champing, and something that you're pretty resident sleeper about? Okay, let's see. I, 
and when I saw this question, I was like, oh my gosh, this is really creative. I like this. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think for pog champing, I'm currently pog champing over. Um, okay, online, I feel like I'm pog champing over Elden Ring. Ooh. So I started playing that recently, and it's been a really a huge challenge. And it's like serotonin boost because I'm beating big, scary, like challenging yeah. bosses and everything. Um, and then offline, I've been playing a lot of Moonstone Island that I just recently got and everything. Oh, cool. And really, honestly, it's just a really gay game, and I love it, okay? Oh, that sounds adorable. <laughs> Yes, it's like basically Stardew Valley meets Pokemon meets Deck Builder oh. and and everything. Yeah, it's really cute. And you get to romance all the characters. And it's a very LGBTQIA inclusive, a lot of different pronouns for different uh, partners and everything. Yeah, and it's really good. Everybody's beautiful. Everybody's hot. It's really a problem <laughs> <laughs> and everything. So that's what I'm pog champing over. Um Pause champing. I'm going to assume this means something. This is how I interpret it. Something that I'm waiting for that's yeah. coming up soon. What, are, what is okay, something okay. that you're like anticipating? Like you're like, all right, this is about to happen. Or like mm-hmm. you see something coming out soon. Something like that. Yeah. So there's like, I think there's two games that are coming out soon that I, I really want to get. And hopefully I'm able to get them. Um, Is Final Fantasy VII Remake. The next part is coming out very soon. But I need to obtain the PS5 first, so that's going to have to come first. But I'm really <laughs> looking forward to playing that game because I played the first part and I'm a big fan of Final Fantasy and like Square Enix games and everything. Because mm-hmm. RPG and everything. Um, and then also KH4. Kingdom Hearts 4 is coming out very soon this, hey. next, this year, actually. We're in 2024. Oh, my gosh. Um, so, yeah, that's coming up soon. So, like, that's another game I'm looking forward to that's going to come out soon. <clears throat> Resident Sleeper. Yeah, what are you, like, ugh, about? Like, what is something that you think is a little overrated, maybe, right now? Overrated? Overrated, okay. or I'm something that to... you find just annoying? Um, I'm trying to think here. Um, I'm trying to think here. Oh, my gosh. Um, I feel like, overall, there's a... I, okay, so I used to be really, like, not too big of a fan of, like, FPS games. And oh, everything. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and now nowadays I play Fortnite offline, but like I only do it offline. Yeah. But like I I'm not like I, I'm not really a person that watches those kinds of games on neither. Twitch and everything. Yeah. They don't really like interest me that much. Mm-hmm. Um like no offense to the streamer or the game and everything. It just seems a little bit boring to me, repetitive and everything. Yeah. But and also like, it's really obviously... hard for you to in- like to interact with chat too whenever you're playing that. Yeah. So it's just a very yeah, like those... it's just a very watching experience. Uh but even exactly. then it's yeah, I understand. I'm there yeah, with you. those uh, I don't know. And then Overwatch. I I my Suda likes to play a lot of Overwatch. I don't like Overwatch. <laughs> it's too much. It's yeah. too much on there. Um and so like it's just not my kind of game. Um but I'll play Fortnite off stream with friends, and that's about it. But I, I probably won't play it with people or anything like that. That's about it. I, I don't know any. I, I can't think of anything. Else nah, that's great. And everything. Yeah, <clears throat> I can also provide what I'm feeling. Pog champing, yeah. pog champing, and resident sleepering about. Um, or pog champing. I'm like a little torn between things. Um, I guess pog champing. I finally got um. Uh, veggies um P- playstation 3 working on stream so oh. i've been able to play sly cooper 2 um oh which has been it's been really fun it's been really cute playing like his original hardware and everything that's always good i'm going to probably play some of that later today um on nice. stream um but i have pause champing um i got gifted um Dave the Diver for Christmas from a community oh, member. Oh, you're going to love it. I'm so excited. I'm so excited about it. It seems like my type of game uh, with all the environmental aspects and like just also like interesting stuff when it comes to ecology and say capitalism and commercialism. Um, mm-hmm. I- I'm excited to nerd out about stuff at like it's just like beyond a game <laughs> um yeah i i just got that game too ooh. and i was playing it for a good while before i gave it a little bit of a break and it's really good you're gonna love it you're okay. gonna love it it's like that screams you in viral yeah. <laughs> i know yeah yeah so i'm deciding if i want to play it offline first and then stream it or if i just want to like you know go in blind and stream it but i feel like it's gonna be something i play offline just because i feel like it's something that i want to enjoy on my on my lonesome mm-hmm. maybe i'll stream it in discord we'll see 
Um, and then something I'm pretty resonant sleeper about. Um, what is something? Mm, dang it, I'm also struggling with this one. Let's see here. Um, I guess something that is like non video game related is like uh, right now in the Midwest, it's, we had a pretty, it's been a very weird winter where it's been pretty warm and then um there hasn't been really much snow so i'm pretty resonant sleep i mean i'm resonant sleeper about this all the time but pretty <laughs> resonant sleeper about climate change right now and just like how it's affecting this winter here um because we didn't get to have a white christmas like i was ex like i was hoping for you oh. know my first time not going back to texas for the holiday but and now it's just cold it's below for it's in the 20s but there's no not really any snow on the ground but oh uh, yeah anyway yeah um, I would have given you some snow. We got some snow over here in Colorado. <laughs> oh, so pretty. Um, and here's a question that I did not include whenever I messaged you, but something that I think would be a cute thing also to ask uh -huh. guests is, what is your favorite emote at this moment? My favorite emote yeah. what pops of up in all your mind? time or just like what's blankies. Pop? Blankies? Oh my gosh, I love blankies. Yes, blankies. I'll blankies. figure out a if way I to post it, it in the show notes if I can, <laughs> but yeah. I wonder if I can include yes. images. I bet I could. That that is the emote I gravitate the the most. It's if I see one. it in someone's chat, I usually end up using it. Mm -hmm. I think the the chat that I use it the most is actually I think it's Emerald. I don't know if you know who Emerald yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. It's a Sonic streamer. Yeah. And everything, and that's like what I come in with all the time. Like ladies, let's like go. Guys. So cute. Yeah, I associate that one with Nina as well. So <laughs> that's funny, mm -hmm. but like I can associate it with you both. Um. But yeah, I think this is it for today. We went on a little bit, but I mean, good combo and stuff. So yeah, yeah. We'll have to see like how long, like what sweet spot we will hit with all these. But I'm happy to just chit chat with you forever. But yeah. in the meantime, where can people find you? Well, people can find me usually on Twitch <laughs> at twitch.tv slash mm -hmm. And same handle for all platforms, honestly. I'm literally everywhere. Oh, that's amazing <laughs> that you got the handle for everything. Woo. Yeah, I'm hoping at some point to take off the TTV because I don't like the TTV, mm -hmm. but it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, that's how I could keep the Mimilina name and everything. Um, but yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, well, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so excited. Um, well, thank you. I had a, a ton of fun, actually. Um, I, I honestly was a little nervous before doing this because I'd never done a podcast. But, like, it, as we talked, like, you made me feel really comfortable. And so, like, it was great. It was actually really great. That's so sweet. Wasn't that, like, a great interview? I'm so... Just... I think I... Just smiling like non-stop throughout that interview as you're probably going to see back in the footage if you're watching this on YouTube or you could just hear my smile via uh, audio <laughs> but thank you again for joining us for this first episode and working through the kinks with us be sure to follow me if you so desire on Twitch, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram all the things are listed in show notes below but mostly it's at Environet Instagram's the weirdo one where it is Nat Beluga. Otherwise, I will catch y'all next week. Have a good one!